Hello again YouTube and I'm back with another informational video and this one is concerning the grid tie inverters and I put out this video for the uh, purpose of informing folks that may be considering uh, putting grid tie inverters uh, with their own backup systems to you know kind of put pump power back into the grid you know in, in the effort of saving just a little bit of money uh, with their excess solar power um, these units work. They work. Uh, they work okay. And uh, one key thing that I want to emphasize is the fact that these units are not UL certified and they're not CE certified. They are cheap units, and there is some risk when you put these units uh, in place. They have a tendency to overheat if you haven't taken any steps to put in maybe an external fan or increase the size of the CPU fan that's on uh, that's in the system. <clears throat> so they will overheat. What happens is when these things heat up, when power is going through and they have a tendency to overheat and these are supposed are supposed to act like heat sinks and the internal fans that come with these units, you can see one here and there is one here, the internal fans just really don't do a good job of, um, of expelling heat from the unit itself and therefore the heat, so the inside of this unit gets hot and the next thing you know if it overheats it, it'll blow a capacitor and, 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 or melt some other uh, uh, electrical components that are on the board uh, inside of the unit. Imagine this being a, 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 sealed, a sealed environment with a whole bunch of heat in it. What do you have? You have an oven. So essentially, you know, you have to take steps to cool these things down. So they will overheat. Uh, I have uh, burned one out. I had a 500 watt inverter similar to this one, and I pumped some power through it, and it just it simply overheated, and you know melted, you know blew out the capacitors, melted some other components, you know burned out some MOSFETs, you name it, it was there. And so what happens is typically these units don't flame out. They don't flame out, you know, a whole bunch of you know gouting flames and so forth. What happens is. They, you know, they burn out and you get the smoke, as I said before in another video. And that's probably what happened to one other user that had similar to this. This unit got hot and as it got hot, um, you know, it just overheated. That's what it did. Even now, it's, uh, it's only putting out maybe 100 and something watts, two, maybe 200 watts. And I turned off this fan so I can make this video because it can get kind of noisy. But it, it, and it kind of, and it's it's even now it's heating up. It's 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 hot. Okay. So these heat sinks and this these fans are supposed to gradually you know um, you know uh, ex, you know uh, expel heat um, you know from you know radiate heat so away from the unit. These fans that come with the unit they don't really work well. Now one other thing about these these grid tie inverters they are not efficient. Okay. I've seen on YouTube and I've read the marketing stuff that comes with these things. They say, well, they're like 80% efficient or 90% efficient. That is not true. Well, not true in the sense that, you know, since I've owned three of these, none of them were efficient. Not one. Um, so if anything, you may get about half the power, uh, maybe 60% of what you put in. So these things are not, they're cheap. They're cheap for a reason. Uh, now, I have a fan connected to mine, as I've shown in my other videos. This fan is actually blowing air out of the unit, out and away. You can see I have space in the back, so it's blowing air out and away from the unit. It works great. There's a big hole that covers that fan, and that hole is huge. It's about something like that, if you can see my hand, you know, like a nice big round hole in the back where that fan is at. So it's blowing air, hot air out and away from the unit. It works great, works great. Now, this particular unit, I also have a fan back there, but I do not have it connected to these terminals. Uh, down here, this is, this is a 24 volt fan that's connected to these terminals that are fed power from this grid, uh, GTI uh, controller, grid time inverter controller that I use. You can see it's kicking on and everything and you know my unit's coming. So it's supplying 24 volts of power to that particular fan. So what happens is when this comes on, the fan comes on. When this goes off, the fan goes off. So it only runs when the fan is running. Um, and it's, it's, work, it's working great. This thing, it, it, hot please. It doesn't, you know, it, the only warmth is coming from maybe the ambient temperature on the outside or whatever. This thing doesn't, it, no, this thing can run all day long and it works great. Not saying that yours, you know, your mileage may vary, but the way I've got this fan, huge fan in the back, blowing hot air out and away from the unit, works great. 
Uh, this fan, this unit is cooled down by this RV fan. Now, if you look at this RV fan, you see the blades. Okay, that's going to push a decent amount of air across this unit. Not only that, it'll probably it'll blow some air through the unit and out. So it, it'll do a very it does a very good job of cooling this unit off. If I did not have this thing running like I don't now, this thing heats up. Even if it'll, if it's only putting this is a 500 watt uh, grid time inverter and it's only putting out you know uh, you know uh, what uh, 230 watts if that maybe 200 at a time and it's pulling now I got 400 watts coming in but again this these things are not very efficient so um, this particular RV fan it's a simple RV fan you can get from Walmart um, and I just simply have it you know essentially uh, connected uh, powered up through this DC adapter that I got from Radio Shack and you know I just simply spliced it in and it's that's not pretty but hey it works okay and so this fan is powered up by uh, this particular unit here this is a an APC surge protector but it's also a timer so when my grid ties go into operation this fan automatically comes on when my grid ties, when this thing, when the timer kicks off, then um, when the timer kicks off, then the fan goes off as, as well. Now this fan, this this I have I've had this fan turned off, and for a little bit, and now you see you, you can hear it. This fan on here is it's blowing out a little bit of air, some some hot air, and it, it's it's it had to come on because I've got this fan off. Now it's it, this thing, it, even though it's blowing out hot air, it's this thing is pretty warm now. So I need to turn that back on at some point. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of emphasize YouTube that yes, these things uh, can overheat. The biggest danger to, to these grid tie inverters is the fact that they overheat. And you know, the biggest risk is the fact that these are not UL certified, They're, but they do work, they do work now. So there is an inherent risk when you put these things in place. Now this is a 600 watt grid tie inverter. Please do not put 600 watts through this thing. Okay, don't don't do it. This is a 500 watt grid tie inverter. Um, I would not put 500 watts through this thing. I would put maybe half that, or maybe it's a well. I got 400 watts coming in here, so it's it's not at capacity. And I've only got you know maybe you know just 200 or so watt, 300 watts or whatever coming through here. Or I you know be honest, I I don't know how much. I know it, it's not full 600 watts. But anyway, YouTube, um, just wanted to address that to, with, you know, uh, so folks can get a, an idea that if once you put this type of stuff in place, there is some risk and you need to take steps to cool it down. All right. Take care, YouTube.